So thank you and uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, maybe good night. <laughs> I don't know where you are. Uh, maybe just a short story to introduce my presentation. Uh, one year ago, uh, before the lockdown, uh, I, I had a meeting with two directors of public transport authorities, the main one in France, from Lyon and from Paris. And the first one uh, was uh, mentioning that, according to him, uh, mobility as a service and new mobility services uh, were not uh, his business. Uh, he, he was focused on the bus, uh, the metro line, and, uh, and, uh, and the tramway, and that's all. And the second one said, okay, mobility as a service, it's very important, but uh, it's a sweat for us because of the GAFA. And I think that both of them uh, were wrong, because mobility as a service is clearly uh, at the heart of the job of uh, a public transport authority, and they have not to fear about the, about the GAFA. And it's what I try to, to explain in the, in the presentation. So we have two parts in this presentation. The, the first one about public transport, what, what is at stake? Why, why do we have to introduce public transport in the mobility as a service scheme? And then uh, uh, we will uh, speak about regulation because we, we, we need to uh, enlarge uh, the responsibilities of public transport authority authorities because uh, we have to change the regulation of urban mobility and uh, I will thank uh, uh, Pekka Niskanen for the teasing of my presentation. So, uh, if we come back to the, the mass, uh, clearly uh, mass is a byproduct of digital revolution. And in the digital revolution, we have two main components. The first, the first one is the shared mobility and all the new mobility services, ride hailing, ride sharing, uh, carpooling, and so on. And then we have also the digital platforms and apps. And for some people, uh, the mass is only the digital platforms. But uh, uh, as indicated just uh, before, we have to take into the two components, the, the, the new mobility services and the apps and the digital platforms. Here we, you have the, the graph uh, 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 prepared by my colleague, uh, Georgina Santos from the Cardiff University. When you have, uh, four models of uh, uh, shared mobilities. And what we observed in the report we prepared one year ago for the, the CER, the Center of, uh, on Regulation in Brussels, is that there is, there is not a lot of interest uh, of these models if we look not at the user's perspective, but at a societal perspective. Because uh, when you develop the model one or the model two, the, the, the model one is the the peer-to-peer -peer car rental, the model two, the car club, and even the model three, the uh, Uber-like service, we have very low impact of car on, uh, car driving and car owner ownership and, and congestion. Sometimes with the model four, uh, we can have some impacts, but rather low impacts. So, uh, as it was mentioned uh, before during the, the, the previous discussion, uh, until now, the impacts of sharing mobilities are, are not very uh, important. And we have to explain that because uh, we, we, we give a, a, a too, big, too big importance to the paradigm of substitution. That is to say, uh, clearly, when we look at the urban mobility, we have the idea of the substitution. Uh, we, we, we want to uh, obtain a model shift from car to public transit. We want to uh, develop walking and cycling instead of driving, teleworking instead of commuting. But uh, what we observe with the new mobility services is that uh, uh, they are not really a substitute for private car driving or ownership. And they are sometimes a substitute for public transit, but uh, uh, they are very often competing with public transit or replacing it uh, in low density areas. So the substitution is not uh, uh, very easy. And there was also a common idea some years ago about the new mobility services, that uh, uh, new mobility services is uh, and substitute public financing 
because they were they were based on the idea of the B 2 C uh, business model, business to consumer. That is to say that the, the 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 new mobility services users were able to pay for that, and it, it will be a, a, a mean to reduce public finances uh, financing of mobility. And clearly, uh, it was not the case. And what we observe today is that the, the business model is changing and transforming into business to government. That is to say, uh, the, the, the new mobility provider are asking money to the government. And then we can have the B to G to C. That is to say, the government is uh, giving money uh, for ser new services for, for, for the population. And maybe you know that uh, Uber, if I, uh, except if I am wrong, is now a member of UITP, that is to say, member of the, uh, of the group uh, uh, managing the public transit. So clearly, if you want to develop new mobility services, probably you need more public subsidies. And then uh, very often, uh, new mobility services are not a substitute for public transit, but just a supplement yeah. to uh, uh, public transit. And when they are a substitute, they are a bad substitute. Uh, it was observed in, the, in some American, North American cities, uh, more congestion because of Lyft and Uber services, uh, or they are ineffective substitute for car driving, or uh, ineffective substitute for car ownership. So we have to maybe to abandon this idea of, of substitution and we have to uh, uh, understand that uh, we we can have a, a radical transformation of public transit for instance thanks to the autonomous vehicle uh, it was uh, explained by, uh, by a lot of uh, studies done by the itf forum in uh, helsinki in dublin in lyon and so and so on but the problem is that uh, the advent of the autonomous vehicle is, uh, uh, is far away and uh, the, the mass has to be introduced uh, within a near horizon. Just to show you the, uh, the hypothesis of one study done by the ITF forum, uh, one study done in Lyon uh, this year, I, I, I don't give to you the results of the study, that is to say the, the, the change in the model splits between autonomous vehicle and uh, old, old system. What is interesting is the hypothesis. You have that. Because there, there were five scenarios in the, in the study. And what is important is the, 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 the second column, that is to say the hypothesis about buses in the, uh, in the, in the model. Uh, we, 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 they keep the, the rail and the light rail, but they remove all the cars, 100% of trips replaced by a robot taxi or shared uh, taxis, and 100% uh, of births uh, replaced by that. That is to say that uh, in these uh, studies of the ITF forum, uh, the main difficulty is supposed to be vanished. That is to say, the main difficulty is you have no more car, you have no more bus, and you have only robot taxi or something like that. And in that case, you obtain a high uh, model share of autonomous vehicle. But clearly, uh, it is a far horizon, and the, the horizon autonomous vehicle is receding with, with the time. So it's better to look at the uh, mass in the near horizon. And the new horizon of, of, um, of cities today is decarbonization. You have the map here uh, with the, the list of uh, 1,500 municipalities all over the world uh, saying that uh, there is a climate emergency. And uh, in December, in last December in, in Paris, there was a, another ITF roundtable about the fact that the main challenge is to reduce uh, auto dependence and to reduce the growth uh, of car traffic. So the, 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 the mass uh, can be, uh, have to, has to be uh, considered today as an intermediate objective of a global objective, that is to say uh, a more sustainable urban mobility, uh, reduction of external costs and reduction of, of CO2 emission. 
just a, 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 an example with the city uh, of Geneva in, in Switzerland. Uh, you have uh, 340,000 jobs in uh, the city of Geneva, and one third of the jobs are, uh, one, third, one third of the workers are coming every day from France. That is to say, you have more than uh, 100,000 people uh, going to uh, Geneva to work, and 75% uh, are using their car. How to, to reach the objective of minus 40 or minus 60% uh, of, of CO2 reduction uh, within 2030, with 75% uh, 70, of people going to, uh, to work by, the, by, the, by their car. Another example of the near horizon, uh, it was already mentioned by uh, uh, one participant just before. If you look at the model splits uh, within the city center uh, in four cities, uh, Barcelona, Frankfurt, Oslo, and Paris, uh, you observe that uh, in the city center, the model, the model share of car is very low. Maybe not in, uh, in Germany, in Frankfurt, but uh, between 13 and 14% in Paris, Oslo, and Barcelona. But if you look at the model splits at the urban area, at the whole agglomeration level, you observe that the model split of car is very high, more than 50% in Frankfurt. And when, you, when you, you compare only public transit and car, what you observe is public transit in Frankfurt is uh, five times less than car. And uh, in Paris, is the, uh, public transit is two times less than car. So clearly, uh, the, the main objective is to change that, and mass is only a way to reach the objective. So it is why, uh, just to summarize the first part, uh, we have to abandon or clearly to reduce the idea of uh, uh, new mobility as a substitute for public transport. And you have to focus on the idea that uh, it's a complement to public transport in a near horizon uh, and that is to say, uh, we have now to introduce the role of public transport authorities because of this near horizon. And uh, as mentioned by uh, my colleague, my, by, by Pekka Niskanen, we have to, to change the public transport authorities into a multimodal, multimodal metropolitan mobility uh, authorities. And then uh, when we will have that, uh, it is time to look at the, at the data governance. So in this second part, uh, I will first uh, focus on the transformation of uh, PTA in MMAs uh, with the idea of multimodality and then uh, the discussion between the bottom-up and top-down process. And then uh, we will uh, look at the, at the data governance issue. Just uh, about mass and multimodality, I, I want to, to open the, the Pandora box. You remember from your... Uh, your time in high school or in the university, that in what remained in the Pandora box is the hope. So I think that we have to open the Pandora box and to uh, abandon the hope of reducing the cost of mobility for everybody, uh, the, the, the hope of a seamless mobility for everybody. Clearly, the users are looking for uh, very uh, uh, attractive modes of transport, they want to reduce the cost, they want to reduce the travel time, the, the monetary costs to improve the comfort and so on. But from public authorities, uh, the, the main problem is accessibility. And if you want to uh, uh, develop accessibility for everybody and in a sustainable way, you have probably to increase the cost of mobility for some people. If you, uh, uh, you put no constraints on the car mobility, you have, you have no effect, you have no change in the system. And, yet, and then we, you still have a lot of people driving and, uh, and going to, uh, to work uh, with their car. So clearly, if we want to develop mass, it's because we have to, re to change the, the, the model split. And we have to change the model split by developing the multimodality. And to develop multimodality, you need an app with a multimodal choice. And uh, until now, a lot of people have only an app with a modo model. Uh, that is to say, 
uh, car drivers are using Waze. Waze is a wonderful app only for cars. Or you have an app just because you are a PT, a public transit user, and you have just an app for the public transit. What is key is to have an app for uh, the all modes and to promote multimodality and the promotion of multimodality, that is to say, increasing the cost of mobility. And then with a uh, multimodal app, you can reduce the trans transaction cost of multimodality. But the first step is an increase of the, uh, of the cost of, of mobility. So the, we, 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 we have now to consider that uh, if we want to develop the new mobility services, they are mainly on the road. And uh, if the PTA are not in charge, in charge of managing the, 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 the road the traffic, it's not possible for them uh, to develop a, 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 a good mass. Because if, if they are only in charge of monitoring, managing the public transit, uh, it's not possible to develop a, an app and to uh, reach the goal of decarbonization. So clearly, uh, we have to abandon what is the, the regulation of mobility today. And we have today a, a fragmented regulation of urban mobility because uh, we have public authorities in charge of roads and, uh, uh, and we have other public authorities in charge of public transit. And uh, uh, if you are only in charge of organizing, financing public transit, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, I mean, uh, to have some uh, impacts on the, on the road traffic. So we, we have to enlarge a spectrum of mobility services, and then we have to transform uh, PTAs into uh, uh, multimodal mobility uh, authorities. So the, your, the, 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 the first change for uh, multimodal uh, mobility authorities is to control the use of public space. And their, their, their objective is not to, uh, uh, to, to, to provide inf infinitesimal time savings to users. The, the, the main uh, objective is not to say, you, you will win one minute every day to, to, to go to, uh, to, to, to home or to work. The, 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 the main message is will favor the modes that reduce the, the, the use of public space, because public space is the rarest resource uh, for, for the community. And this is the, the same graph that uh, another presented just before by, uh, by in the previous presentation. Just in yellow, I show that uh, until now, the PTA were only in charge of public transit, and they were in charge of uh, 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 ticketing for public transit. And the multimodal uh, authority have to be in charge of all the mobility services. They are, on, they are not managing all the mobility service, but they have to be in charge of the, uh, uh, the, the, the level playing field of, uh, of that. And then uh, we, we observe that uh, uh, in order to develop the mass, we have two uh, main options. The first option, uh, it, was it will be presented also uh, tomorrow by, by Corinne, uh, and we, you, you have here the graph uh, proposed by ITF. The motorbike process is a step-by-step -step integration of mobility services by the platform or the new mobility providers. It's like WIM in Helsinki. But we have, in this, this case, we have two main risks. The, 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 the first is that the private operator is in a monopoly situation and the regulatory power of the public authority uh, becomes very weak. Or the private operator fails to achieve the full integration of mobility services. It is a main risk already mentioned that we have uh, a mass as just a, a, a small system uh, for some geeks, or for, 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 for those who are convinced by multimodality, but only five or 10% of, of the population. And then what I suggest is the top-down process and the key role of, uh, uh, of public authorities. So in a, in a top-down model, uh, we have at the, at the first level, uh, some clear objectives are defined by the, 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 the public transport authority in terms of accessibility and expected model speed. It is the case, for instance, in, in Oslo. 
And then you have an open public platform uh, uh, centralizing all the data from all the mobility services. So in this case, uh, the, uh, uh, as mentioned already, uh, um, maybe by, by ANS, the, uh, the public, uh, the, the, the multimodal uh, authority is something like a, a trusted third party because they are proposing a, a public good with the data uh, uh, in order to achieve the, the, a good common goods uh, with, uh, with accessibility. And sometimes you have an intermediate model between the top down and the, uh, and the bottom up is the model you have in Vienna and uh, probably the, the model in Brussels with uh, uh, the, the, the main uh, public transport operator is in charge of that. But in that case, you have, you have also some risk about the asymmetry between the actors and the weak capacity of the public authority. So I just want to, to close this presentation with, about the, the economics of platform and, uh, and data governance. Clearly, uh, the, 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 the giant of uh, internet, the GAFA, are not interested by, by providing uh, a mass in, in Lyon, in Paris, in Oslo, and so on, because they are not interested in the positive value of an efficient mass, because the positive value, that is to say what is possible for them to, to, to obtain, uh, to gain from the positive value, is very low. What, they are interested by the negative value of the data. Uh, with the, the, the data uh, obtained by, uh, by Google, by uh, Facebook, and so on, they obtain a, a value that they can sell to the advertising companies and so on. So the, the positive value of a mass uh, is, not, is not very good, for, very high for people. The positive value of a mass is an external monetary benefit. It's a, a kind of common good that is to say a better urban accessibility with less congestion, less pollution, less CO2 emission, less noise, but it's mainly a common good and not a private good. And in order to develop this, to, to improve this, this common good, you have to uh, develop a public good. Uh, may I recall that uh, the common good, uh, it's uh, where you have non-excludability, but you have rivalry because you have congestion and so on. But uh, in, in the case of a public good, you have non-excludability and not rivalry. So it's necessary to transform the, the data about mobility into a public good. And it's uh, what is explained in the, uh, in the graph. Uh, we have to, 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 to set up consistent territorial data sets uh, with a, a licensing system when you, where you have all the data uh, of all modes and then can be used by all the mobility providers, uh, private, uh, public, uh, and so on. But the, uh, uh, the data, uh, the, the, the data set is proposed, is, is managed by the, 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 the multimodal uh, authority and the public authority. And with, when you have that, you can open uh, the, the, the vending canal uh, the, and you, 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 you can, uh, multiply the number of uh, uh, mobility providers, but because you have one public good, and then the, 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 the public authority is in charge of the back office of the, the data as a public good, and then the front office uh, can be developed by other uh, participants. So uh, uh, I advocate clearly in favor of uh, uh, public authority as a trusted third party. Uh, they should engage uh, dialogue with private sector and new mobility offers, but uh, uh, they, they have to become this trusted third party with a licensing policy, uh, allowing the, uh, the old participants to reuse the, 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 the data. And we have uh, the objective is to obtain a fair competition. And for instance, uh, what we have in the French law now since the end of last year. If it's, we, we open the, the sales channels uh, under two conditions, uh, the private operator can resell the, the ticket, but at the same price that the public authorities, and the mass provider should give uh, the, their data 
to the, to, to the multimodal authority. And then uh, everybody can use the data if they accept to, uh, to give their, their own data. So as a conclusion, uh, clearly uh, the main challenge today is for public transport authorities because they have to change totally uh, their, 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 their functioning and uh, uh, because they have to develop multimodality. If they don't do that, the, the, the model shift uh, will be the same in 2030 and today, and the, 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 the CO2 emission will, will remain at a high level uh, and so on. So mass is only an intermediate goal, but it's to reach, to reach some other key objective uh, like decarbonization, social inclusion, and so on. And then uh, uh, we have to change the, uh, the management of public transit organization, and they have now to take uh, in their domain of activity the management of urban space and the management of the data mobility uh, as a public good. Thank you. <laughs>